Hey guys, welcome back to The Crafty Cottage. My name is Tuesday. I'm so glad that you all are joining me today because we are going to be turning this composition notebook into an art journal. I got this idea from another YouTuber. I can't remember her name, but I'm going to link her video down below. Um, but I got the idea to from her to basically make this composition notebook into an art journal um, where I can use it to do various art things. Basically use it like a sketchbook or a journal or something and just I'm gonna make the pages pretty first. So I have decided to start a little mini series um, an art journal mini series because I had other ideas spawn off this one. So um, today we are going to be prepping the pages of this notebook um, for art journaling. Um, I'm not going to do every single sheet in here. Um, I am just going to be doing some of them and then later on in this series I will probably do some more but we are just going to be doing the first 20 pages or so of this. So let's go ahead, let's grab our tea. Today I have mint tea that one of my pen pals sent me and it's got milk and honey in it as always. And then for our candle, I grabbed my leaves scented candle from Bath and Body Works again. Um, so without further ado, let's light our candles and we'll get into this video. If you're going to be joining me today on doing this project, what you're going to need is a composition notebook, obviously. And these are like a dollar or 50 cents at any store. Um, I got this one from Dollar General for a dollar. Um, you're going to need various paint brushes. I grabbed a bunch. Paints. Today I'm using these Simply Acrylics. Um, I just have a bunch of colors of these and I figured they would be good. I'm also going to be using some watercolors today on some of the pages because I just like the way watercolors look. And then I'm also going to be experimenting with these um, pin and gear uh, double-ended markers and we'll see how those work. And then this is totally optional, but I brought in my hair dryer so that I can speed up the drying process. I am also going to be using these Crafters Square paints that I got from Dollar Tree. Um, I'm actually curious to see how these compare to the Simply Acrylic paints. So I have all of my paints out on my palette and let's go ahead and get started. So for this first page, I think I'm just going to pick a color and paint it that one color. Um, that just seems to be the simplest to do for this first page. I'm just going to go ahead and go with white and get to it. should probably put something underneath this book. Um, let me do that really fast. Alyssa in her video talks about how she likes doing art journals in composition notebooks because it um, you're less likely to be worried about messing up some expensive sketchbook on something so I wanted to do this because I thought it would be a cool experiment um, maybe boost creativity because since graduating from art school, my creativity level has been not very high. So, um, one thing that if you do this, you will notice um, your paper is going to wrinkle a little bit because it's wet paint. Um, so far, this has just created um, a little 
thickness or a little oomph to the paper. Um, and that's pretty much all we're doing is creating um, an extra layer for the paper uh, so that it's not just straight on the flimsy paper so it can withstand more than just writing. Alright, so there's one layer of white down on this sheet. I'm going to blow dry it, but I'm going to speed up um, the recording so that you guys do not have to suffer through um, the sound of the blow dryer. Alright, so I this is the first time that I am actually doing this project. I wanted to take you guys along for the first time that I did this. Um, and what that means basically is this is a trial and error kind of video. So y'all are seeing firsthand what works and what doesn't. Um, so that was the simply acrylic white paint that I put over that and as you can see you can still see the blue lines. It is still like a little sticky, it's not fully dry yet, um, but it's dry enough um, that I could flip it over and start working on the back. Um, but what I think I'm going to do, I also have set out the Crafter Square acrylic white paint from Dollar Tree and I'm going to do a second layer of white over the top of this with that um, and we'll see if that covers a little better and if it doesn't. Um, I have a bunch of other different kind of paints that we can um, attempt to use. So another thing I forgot to mention that you should probably grab is a cup of water unless you're going to be changing your brush out every time you change colors. Um, but since this is white and I'm just going back into a different white, I'm just going to keep using the same brush without cleaning it. So this is the Crafter Square White. Let's see if that does any better and even if I didn't have two different whites I probably would just go ahead and do a second coat of the white just to see if two coats helped cover up the blue and if even if it doesn't I do kind of like how it looks um, prepping this composition notebook or a simpler way of putting it just painting or creating a background to the art journal um, is just eliminating the white space that most artists are afraid of. Um, so it took me a couple days to actually start in my new sketchbook that I got recently because of the white space. So I started by just coloring all over a page. Um, it really does help for creati creativity block or artist block or whatever you want to call it to just start by putting something on the page. It doesn't have to be anything specific, it can just be a color. And I realize I'm talking about a white space and painting white on a piece of paper, but this specific activity that we're doing right now um, is pretty much just adding thickness to the notebook so that we can use it um, for other things. So there's my second coat of white. Um, it hasn't really changed much and that could just be because it's white and it's a little um, translucent, a translucent white. So I'm going to um, blow dry this again and we'll just go on to the next page and see if a different color will cover this better, but um, we may come back and do something else with this. So let me blow dry it and I will be right back. Alright, so this is mostly dry. Um, I don't know if, if you guys can see, but it does have a little shine to it. See the page behind it. Um, this one has a little bit of a shine to it. And um, Alyssa says to... Um, she prefers to use matte um, paint when doing this. It's mostly dry. It's a little sticky. You can probably hear it sticking to my hand. Um, but it's a little sticky, um, but mostly dry. So uh, 
I kind of like how this looks, the little glossiness in it, um, but it is creating thickness. Your paper is not going to be straight anymore. It is going to um, crinkle, it's going to change, um, it's gonna feel thinner, but this technique is going to make it thicker. Um, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna flip over here. We're gonna just go straight into the next page. Um, like I said, this page isn't fully dry, but it's dry enough that I can uh, start on this one next. So I think what I'm going to do here is um, just pick a different color and paint paint the whole thing. We'll do that. Let's do that. Alright, so I'm going to come in with this purple. It's like a purpley pink, um, but it's called purple. I'm going to go in with this one and see if that, if it gets rid of these lines. So. Got my purple. Ooh, that's nice. I like that color. Don't forget to get down in the binding area. If you can see it, but in the thinner areas, the line still shows through, but the thicker areas where the paint is, um, it's still showing a little bit, but not a whole lot. Um, the glossiness of the paint is actually really nice in this color. Um, I may end up doing two coats on a lot of these, but with this one, I actually really like the lines kind of poking through, because um, you can see them, but not all that well. And again, don't forget, we are just putting down a base layer. We're not even doing really anything artistic yet. Um, I am planning in this series to do various videos actually filling up these pages, not just putting down the base layer, but actually using this uh, art journal that I am making with you guys. Um, Got one side done. I'm actually going to flip this over so that the side that I'm painting is on the right side. I haven't decided yet what I want to do with like the cover. I don't know if I want to leave it as is. Ooh. Getting more paint. Um, I don't know if I want to leave it as is or if I want to maybe paint it, or collage it, or something. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, if you guys have an idea, you guys can go ahead and leave it in the comments for me to look at. Um, and I will possibly do your idea. <clears throat> I'm hoping if this works out really well, I will actually do this technique often and get back into making art things like this. Um, like I said, since graduating from art school, I haven't really had much creativity in doing a lot of things. Um, so hopefully this helps with that. other side is sticking to the back and I have been painting on the cover so 
Um, I haven't also haven't decided what to do with the inside cover. Um, it's a little glossier, so I was afraid to try to paint it in this video. Uh, but we'll see after all this is dry. Um, crap. What uh, what I can do with it. So, all right, there is the first layer of that color. I'm going to blow dry it really fast. Um, so I'll be right back. So like I said, the initial painting um, step of this process does make your paper flimsy and it will also stick to the other pages behind it. So you'll just have to unstick it um, either during the drying process or after. Uh, so this isn't completely dry. I just wanted to mention that. So I'm going to come back with the dryer. I, I, I don't know if you guys can see, but you still can see the line. So what I'm noticing with this paint is it's a little more translucent. translucent. Um, so maybe in my next prepping um, of the pages, I will use a different brand and see if that covers it better. Um, I kind of like it on this one because it gives like a like 3D glasses effect um, because it's like a pinky purple. Um, but also like the difference here, like this right here is dry, like it's completely dry. And it's lighter here and darker here. And I really like how that looks just like by itself. So I'm going to finish blow drying and I will be right back. There is that one. Um, it's a lot less shiny than the other side. I don't know. Can you see that? How this one's like reflective. This one's not really that reflective. I mean I guess it is in the parts where the paint is more thick but I really like how this one looks. Alright let's go to the next page and I think for this one I'm gonna do um, different colors. Alright so for these pages I think I'm going to do blue and orange because they are complementary colors of each other. So um, or blue and yellow. Let's do blue and yellow. So I'm going to do a dark blue over here. The blue actually does so far blend in with the um, lines. I can still see the red one, but and like I said, your um, Pages will stick together. You'll just have to unstick them yourself. Um, so I got purple on the edges a little bit. Um, and that could be another thing that you do. Um, there would be a lot more unsticking happening, but after you've gone and painted all your pages, or even when you're done and it's like the last thing you do, you could um, paint the edges. So like close the book and paint around the edges. That would be cool. Maybe we'll do that at the end. Like the very, very end. Like I said though, you would probably have to go through and unstick every single page because that would probably act as a glue and stick all your pages together. But could be worth it. Could be really, really cool. <clears throat> I think with this, since I have said multiple times multiple times this is a trial and error kind of art journal experiment um, and I said that I'm using acrylic paint right now and that I would like to also use watercolor just as again an experiment I also have some spray paint that I might use on a page or two and see how that reacts with other materials. Um, 
if I do the spray painting, I probably won't do it right now in this video, um, but maybe in the next prepping video that I make, um, I might show it to you guys then because I don't have the space set up to do spray paint right now. I would have to go out to the garage um, and set up a whole thing and I just don't have the time to do that today but maybe if I plan it a little more in advance next time I can do it then. So there's our blue. I actually really like that. It did take away most of the lines. Um, I can still see some of the lines on the red line but that's okay. Um, I'm going to rinse out my brush and get the yellow ready. Um, And I do have two different yellows. I have this lemon yellow and then this deep yellow. I'm gonna use the deep yellow because I think that would go really good next to this blue. Um, so let me rinse out my brush really fast. I always, after I rinse my brush, I'll always attempt to dry it off because um, wet, brushes and acrylic don't really go that well together um, and as you can see I'm not really rinsing my brush out all that well this time around um, because I don't really mind if my colors mix a little um, we're just putting color on the paper all right so this is the simply deep yellow um, and I figured it was going to be a little more translucent than the blue, but that is okay. It kind of unifies them a little, having the blue lines behind the yellow. I also have this color in the crafty square or crafters square, um, but this that I'm painting with right now is the um, the simply acrylic paint. Honestly, I don't know where to get the simply acrylic paint. Um, I got it from somebody cleaning out their craft room, so I got it for free. But I can attempt to find it. It sounds like something that would be sold at. Joann's or Hobby Lobby or something like that but I can definitely look for it and leave it in the uh, description for you guys so that if this is a kind of paint that you guys would like um, you can get it for yourselves. I usually use um, oh, what's the brand? Apple Barrel and stuff like that um, you'll probably see them in the next video that I make doing this art journal prep um, or really any other painting video. I do have other painting videos on my channel that you guys are welcome to check out. I can link some in the description for you and I have used the other acrylic paints in those videos as well. Alright, so there is the first coat of that and I kind of like the lines coming through it so I might only do the one coat on this one. Um, so it is now time to blow dry and shockingly you guys I have not blown out my candle yet. It is still going. Alright blow drying time.
you can see the difference in these two paints. Um, this one is more matte than this one. This one has the reflectiveness going on. Um, and I don't know if you saw, but my corner flipped over a little bit, which is actually kind of cool. It left like a little imprint of the lines. That's pretty cool. So, so far we have white and purple and yellow and blue. And I think what I'm going to do next on this one is um, we're going to go a little different and I am going to actually layer the paint. So I'm going to put a color down and then we're going to layer on top of it, which is going to give it more thickness. So let me get my brush. I'm actually going to flip. My paper got stuck together. Hold on a sec. Okay, and we're back. So, um, be wary of your pages sticking together. So, I think I'm actually going to let's stuck together a little bit. I'm going to skip this page, might do something else with it, and we're going to go actually to this one, and I'm going to paint it black first. While I was unsticking the pages, I was thinking of different things to talk about because I am very bad at just talking on these videos um, because it feels like I'm talking to myself even though eventually somebody will be listening to it, um, but at the moment I'm just talking to myself and I never know what to say, um, but it is almost October, which means it is almost Halloween. Um, we are in fall, um, and I love fall. I love the cooling off of the weather and I love, um, the color change and I love Halloween. It's one of my favorite holidays um, and I'm super excited about it. So um, I then thought of a question for you guys and that is what is your favorite season or your favorite holiday? Um, what's your favorite time of year? Um, to let me know that y'all are here with me even if you have nothing really to say you can answer that question for me down in the comments. Um, it will really make me feel better about standing here talking to you but to myself um, and if any of you are actually YouTubers yourself you will understand what I mean by feeling like you're talking to yourself um, this paint has chunkies in it also if you are a YouTuber watching my videos um, put your YouTube down in the comments and I will definitely subscribe to you. Alright, we're gonna flip over. That did cover nicely. I can't see the lines at all. I might end up doing it black for the rest of this book. Not really, but... Alright. Gotta get some more black paint. And like I said, this is the Simply Acrylic. I also have apple barrel but I did not get any of that out uh, because I really wanted to see how this paint would hold up on the paper. I don't know if y'all can see that. Oh no this is it. Dang it. I'm sorry y'all I just lied because I just realized that this isn't even open yet. I don't know if you can see that but it's not open. So this is the apple barrel paint um, that I got out. My bad you guys. I so sorry, I did not mean to lie to you, but I totally forgot that I did decide to just do this one because it was open and I didn't want to have another black paint open, but it does cover very well. Um, I can't see the lines at all. So we'll just keep painting black all over the place. So on this one, um, Alyssa does do layering in her video while she is prepping her 
composition notebook and I can't remember if she lets the base coat dry first and then paints on top but um, I don't know if you guys can tell but this is actually drying really fast um, there's only a couple more little spots that needs to dry so I'm not going to um, blow dry the base coat I'm just gonna once I'm done painting it I'm gonna let it air dry a little bit and then I'm just gonna go ahead and layer on top of that um, and we'll see where that goes all right so there's that that is done stick my brush in the water um, I am gonna take this out and flip it over so that I have the other side back on it all right so what I'm going to do now is just layer it up a little bit um, and how I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to take a sponge brush and dip it in the colors and then we'll just, I'm just going to paint on top. Um, so I am getting pink, well it's magenta um, which is basically pink, a pinky purple. Um, so I'm going to take this and I'm just going to paint on top of this black. And like I said, trial and error, um, this is just putting color down. I am not doing anything super fancy. Um, I am just putting color on paper. My little page there ripped and we'll, we'll try to do something with that. So the cool thing about sponge brushes is you can get several different textures in with a sponge brush by doing um, different techniques with the brush. So if you can get the cool pattern like that or you can swipe it and it does different things. I feel like I'm painting Bob Ross trees. Like I said, I'm not doing a whole lot with that. I just wanted to get some color down. I think I will actually, um, I'm gonna wipe this brush off and go in with another color and just keep layering on top of this black um, background. But now I'm going in with violet and just gonna poke around. And don't forget, layering is just making it thicker. We're just putting color down. We're not doing anything fancy yet. I feel like I've said that a lot. Do you guys, are you tired of me saying that yet? That we're just putting down color? Because we're just putting down color. That's all that's happening. Is color is being put on paper. All right, I'm gonna switch and do one more color. We'll do a little in between. We'll go back to the purple that we used earlier. Those are basically the same color. That is crazy. Actually, really like how that looks. I'm gonna stick this brush in the water and I'm going to I'm not gonna leave it there because sponge brushes in the water are never good outcome. So I'm gonna dry this off and then I'm going to blow okay, well that still has paint on it, so I'm just gonna leave it right there. Did y'all see that? That was so cool. Like the, the purple and stuff, it's still there. It just kind of blended in. 
that's really cool. Um, the camera doesn't show it as well as I see it, but that is awesome. I like how that looks. Um, and I could very well just keep laying it up. I could put more purple down where there's purple, um, but I, I like that. I'm gonna leave it. So since I did a dark color here and left this blank and did I'm stuck. a dark color here, I'm going to attempt to use my um, pen and gear markers. Um, these tend to bleed, so I figured right here would be a good spot to try to use them since it's between two dark colors. Um, so, what have I been saying this whole time? We are just putting color on paper. So I just grabbed four random colors, and these are fine tip on one side and broad tip on the other, and they just look like a highlighter on one side. So I'm going to use that side, and we're just going to go to town. Just start making marks. Make lines. Because what are we doing? We are putting color on paper. Alright. Switch colors and just keep doing that. I'm just going to keep making lines. I'm not even making anything specific. I'm just making lines. And you can see in some of the spaces, I'm not even pushing very hard with the marker. I am just dragging it across the paper. Ooh, you know what this, these colors remind me of? Those cups. Those like 90s cups. They're like a huge thing. I'll flash a picture up of what I'm talking about, but this color scheme reminds me of that. Alright, so then I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing it. Just color. Because for an artist, a white page is intimidating. So there's still white, but there is also something to go off of. And in reality, this could be it. This could just be the page. And this is all I'm doing, is scribbling on the page. So... I highly recommend this. And this, I have heard, I think they do it a little more violently than I'm doing, but using this as a method to get anger out, or really this whole project is pretty good for just relaxing, just, um, what am I trying to say? There's not much thought going into what I'm doing on these pages. I am just putting color on these pages. So really, this is just a nice activity to when you when you don't wanna you wanna do something but not something that's gonna kill your brain. Alright, so I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, so here's my awesome scribbles. I actually think I'm gonna do something here because there's just a weird... Let's just keep going at it. This right here does not require an art degree, you guys. Alright, there we go. I like that better. Okay, so here is my scribbled page. So, I am... My pages are sticking together. I think this is one reason that Alyssa said to use matte paints is because the... It's, I'm not going to say it's a glossy paint, but... Oh, man. But, um... These paints that are glossier um, are sticking together. My page right here is sticking and it ripped a little. Darn. Well, I will work with that later. We'll figure something out. We'll fix it. Alright. 
So what I was originally showing you, I have to like keep unsticking pages. Hold on. Okay. So what I was originally showing you here is my scribble. And I said I wanted to do it on the darker backgrounded ones so I could see if they bled through. And this one you can kind of see it a little bit um, where it bled through. But it actually looks pretty cool because you can't see the color of the marker bleed through. It's just all the same color. Um, so I actually really like that look. And then I can do something with that later. Um, so then on the black page you can't see that at all. So that is actually really cool and I actually really like that, how that turned out. All right, let's go to another one. What do you guys say we do some watercolor? How many pages in are we? Let's see. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we're just gonna keep going. Um, I have my cup of water here. I've had um, this brush sitting in it for a while. It's kind of getting gross. So I'm going to go switch out my water, um, get fresh water from my watercolors, and I will be right back. Alright, so I have my clean water. Um, for watercolor, I'm actually going to use a smaller brush. So I'm going to dry this one off and get a different brush for this this section. Black is always like the worst color to use because it never washes out. Alright. So here are my watercolors. I have the Crayola watercolors that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I am going to be using this brush right here. It's a royal and Lag nickel size eight. Oh, you can't see that. Still can't see it. Just take my word for it. All right, so there are tons of different watercolor techniques. Um, I don't really use any of them. I am just putting water or putting color on paper. So when I watercolor, I dip my brush in the water and get it wet and then dip it in the color. Let's do, I haven't done watercolor in a while, in a while so all of my watercolors are kinda crusty and gross. So, got some orange, let's just go to town. Since watercolors are more translucent than um, acrylic paints, these the blue lines really aren't going to go away. They're probably here to stay forever on watercolor. So we'll go with this orange. Oh, that's yellow. It is orange in the palette, but yellow when you put it down. That, so that's not okay. Water, paint. You guys can even see that. You see that, right? That is orange. I'm dipping it in the orange. Yellow. Never understood that. Anyway, I'm just going in with different colors. Okay, that one was red and it came out orange. Watercolors don't make any sense. This is my favorite technique of watercolor. Just putting color down. And I do like to get the brush wet and then go back over it and kind of blend it out a little bit. It's always fun to do that. And this is actually drying pretty fast. But again, like I said previously, um, Putting wet on paper does make it flimsy, but once it dries, it uh, it's really adds to the. I don't know what I'm trying to say. 
it gives the paper more oomph. That's a fun word, oomph. And for this page in particular, I am just doing warm colors. Um, so I'm not really rinsing out my brush all that much. I'm just pretty much getting it wet and going back and forth between colors um, because they're all smooshing together on here anyway. So. I am very impressed with this journal. I mean, it's the, the lines are kind of bleeding together, but not really. One thing, if you're going to do watercolor, is to check the other side, see how it's bleeding. I probably should put something between those. Let me grab something real fast. Junk mail is great for art. It is one of the best art supplies. All right, let's keep going. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of red in this. Is this one red? I don't know. That is probably as red as we're gonna get. It's like a pinky orange. That's I wanted to like be good at watercolor, but as you guys can see, it's not my first art form. Still like it and I still like how it looks, but I prefer when doing watercolor to do the faux watercolor method because you get the same look in things without having to really do that much to it. So if you haven't noticed, I've just been working on this one side for right now, um, and that is mostly because I really was just putting color down and then got the idea to do warm on one side and then I'm going to do cool colors on the other side. Um, so that is why I'm doing that, which really I didn't have to explain that to you, you would have seen it in a couple minutes anyway after I finished this. Alright, so that's pretty cool. I like how that looks. Alright, so now I'm gonna rinse that out a little better than I was. I'm going to turn this over. Um, I need another piece of junk mail. Hold on. For this I actually am not going to turn it over just because I don't want to um, mess up this I'm just going to leave it like this, and now we're going to do cool colors. So, let's start with this purple. And I'm just going to do the same method. Color on paper. It is the best method. There are several other techniques to watercolor. You can... The one I'm doing now is... Uh, wet on dry, but there's wet on wet. Um, I said there's many other techniques, and then I immediately forgot all of them as soon as I said it. So that uh, there's that. There's that information for you. So this side. Again, because it's a, ooh, there's a chunky. Since it's so um, translucent and it's, you can actually see the junk mail behind this one because it's wet. This one, why are there so many chunkies? 
This one, uh, you can see the color from behind popping up through it is why it's got the weirdness happening there. I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure that um, that will go away when it dries. I'm honestly not sure how the watercolor is going to affect the acrylic on the other side. Um, so far it's just making the paper flimsy, which is, as I've mentioned, a normal thing that will happen. Trying really hard not to get to mix between the pages. If it does, that's fine. It's just not really what I am going for this time. Like I did with the black page, I am honestly just layering and layering. So I'm doing the cool colors, but really I'm just putting color down, putting more on top, um, really creating a good base for whatever art project I get to throw on here. So one thing that you could do, because you can definitely tell like these, you can't see that, these, the cool colors have more pigment in them than the, the um, warmer colors. Um, what you can do is you can go back after this dries and do another layer of the cool, or the warm colors. Just so you can get um, more gusto, I guess, in your colors. Um, but I actually like the I think juxtaposition is the word I'm looking for. Um, if you haven't noticed by now, I'm not great with words. Uh, they're actually terrible. Oh, almost dipped in my tea. That would have been bad. Do not do that. If you are like me and you grabbed yourself some tea while we are crafting today, uh, don't dip your watercolor brush in your tea. That uh, ruins the tea. And then, therefore, you now don't have any tea. One thing I am going to recommend if you uh, watercolor and you blow dry it dry um, is make sure you don't have very many puddles so I'd give it a little while to um, air dry a little bit so that uh, you have enough uh, so that you're not splattering paint everywhere because that would be bad. I think I'm gonna call that good. Maybe some blue, maybe some of that blue, and then let's water it. Just like that. All right, so I'm gonna let this air dry a little bit before I actually, um, blow dry it dry. Um, I am going to go ahead and close up my watercolors for now because I'm going to switch back to acrylic after this one. Um, but I'll probably pull those out later. Um, I am going to go ahead and blow dry this side though. So while this one's air drying, I'm going to do this one.
I'm going to show you one of my favorite things about watercolor and painting on paper. It's this right here. That crinkle sound. I love that sound. Right. I actually really like how these look. I like this one better, um, but I do like how they look. And we did kind of bleed over on the side, but we can leave that actually. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to leave that because that looks really cool. And then I'll build on top of that. So I'm going to leave that page. So when you watercolor, you get two pages done. It did not affect this one. This one is still black. Um, so if you would like to do it this way, you can. Um, and then you get two pages done at once. So we're going to acrylic this side. Need my I'm sticking pages together again. All right, so I am going to just paint this with an acrylic paint. Let's do red. I gotta get my under junk nail paper. Ooh, this one could be cool and we could do this. I have an idea. I'm not gonna explain it, just watch. Isn't that cool? I like that. Maybe even dip into some yellow. I mean, I'm still gonna dip into red right now because I need another brush to dip into yellow, but and now Tyrion's meowing. Can you guys hear that? Can you hear that? That annoying cat outside? I love him, but he's annoying. That keeps happening. This corner, corners keep giving. All right. Let's throw in some yellow. We'll do this yellow too. This bright lemony yellow. That's nice. I like that. And then look at this cool color that mixing those together gave me. Oh, that is so cool. I love that. Okay. Go in with the other side of the orange and just mix this all together. I am enjoying this. Y'all, this is just great. If you really just need something to do because <laughs> you're bored, maybe, or something, whip out a composition notebook, go get one from the dollar store, and just paint it. Like, you don't even have to make an art journal. Just paint it. This could be the art. And that's okay. Like, look at that. Look at the fallness of this page. I love this page. It's right now my favorite page. All right. There's a lot of red up there and not a lot down here. Let's do some red down here. <sighs> love it. I 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 love it. All right. Like I said, fall It's one of my favorite times. Favorite time of the year. All right. Let's put some yellow up here. Alright, I think I'm gonna call this one done, you guys. This one's pretty cool. Maybe put some orange here and then call it done. Okay, I have to let the cat in before he drives me insane. So, let me put these in the water, let the cat in, and blow dry them. I didn't ever mention this before, but my hair dryer, I don't know if you can see that, has different heating and different, um, speeds and then also has this cooling button so I've been doing warm for the initial um, drying process and high hot or warm and high um, and then I'll switch to cool um, when it starts to get more dry and if there's like huge globs kind of like this one right here where there's a lot of paint right there I'll go to hot so um, whatever you think works for you um, do that
All right, this is still a little sticky, but I just, it won't dry. All right, so I do like the like lightness to darkness here. That's really cool. All right, so how many pages do we have? This one keeps sticking. We might have to do something else with that one. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We're gonna go up to twenty, so we'll do a couple more. What did I just say? Thirteen. We'll do 19, that way it ends on an even number. Alright, so there's that. So one thing I keep being like, oh, I'll do that on the next one, but then I keep forgetting and doing something else. So we're just putting color on paper. Putting color on paper? You agree, yes? Putting color on paper? I'm glad that you agree, because that's all we're doing is putting color on paper. So one of my favorite ways to put color on paper is to just pick it up and put it on the paper. I got too much, but you get the gist. We're finger painting now. Yep, we're taking it back to kindergarten and preschool and we are just gonna finger paint our way through these next two pieces. And then I'm, I'm gonna pick up some glue and just smush it in there. Did I say blue? I meant orange. I'm picking up some orange and smushing it in there. Okay, and then let's pick up some green and mush that in there. Let's do some more green up here. Do you know how much planning this is taking you guys? Zero. And just smooshing it on there. And the, the thing that's gonna happen when you use your fingers is it's gonna lay flatter on there. It's not gonna like sink into the paper. So it's gonna be thicker paint, which is gonna make your base thicker. Um, so and it's going to take a, while, a little longer to dry if you're not using a hair dryer, but this page is going to be a lot denser than all the others. So this specific page, there is no thought. I am grabbing colors, putting them on there. So hang on while I go yell at the cat. All right, and I'm back. And I have no idea what I was saying. I am just putting colors on, so there is no like, I'm gonna do cool colors, I'm gonna do warm colors. I am literally just picking up colors and putting them on the paper. And they're like big globs of color. And I'm just sticking it on there. Let's go ahead and go over this side. Why not? We're just putting color down, right? That's all that's happening. And really, you can do this technique with the whole thing. Look at that coolness, look. I don't know why adults don't finger paint more. It is like the most fun thing ever. All right, and then we'll put some yellow here. And there, and there, and there. And now we're just gonna smoosh. That's like my favorite word, smoosh. And you gotta say it with the weird little twinge in it. Smoosh. I didn't put my background page behind this, but that's okay. And the cool thing, I can leave this. This right here, this little like blank that's happening. I'm gonna leave that. That looks cool. I like how that looks. All right, I forgot to smoosh this side over here. You know what else I'm gonna grab? Sparkle paint, because I have it. Why not? Just smoosh it on there. Yep, just like that. All right, we're gonna get some dark blue. Just smoosh that down too. Why not? Black, sure. There's a Moosh in that one. Moosh wasn't the right word. The uh, my paint is starting to not yeah no it's yeah it's starting to dry because of the uh, um, blow dryer. It's actually kind of funny. 
it's just like drying in mounds. So it's only like the top that's dry, the rest is not. But I don't know, it's something funny about it. Smush and paint onto the paper. And doesn't that look cool? I mean, like, I'm not done, but like, I could leave it like this and I would be okay with it. What I could do is get a little more color right here and separate this from what I'm about to do. Because I want this glitter here. I like that. I'm going to leave it. Okay, I could do that right there. See, mush that all together. Maybe bring it in over here. Yep. Maybe grab some more yellow. And I'm primarily using these two fingers, and that's it. I mean, this one gets in there a little bit, but not really. But like, I'm just grabbing and smushing, just like this. <clears throat> just let go of all your worries and all the stress of life and just get some paint and use your fingers and smush it into a composition notebook. Because we're just putting paper, well, we're just putting color down, right? That's what we're doing. So, I was talking earlier. I'm just going to grab this, and I'm just going to, woo, all the way around right there. That's going to make those pages stick together. Oops. I got it on the page. Oops, I'm sticking it in it more. Just pick it up and just put it back down. All right, we're going to grab our handy page separator junk mail because that should have gone down first but I wasn't thinking oh I just stuck my thumb on that oh well and then what else you can do with the glitter because you can see how it like just shows right through it you can pick up the glitter and you can put it over here and you can just set it on top and there's glitter at all glitter all right what color are we gonna put here doesn't matter let's do red Look, and I can even go in with my left hand and just smoosh, smoosh. I am actually ambidextrous, so I mean, it doesn't matter what hand I use. I have 10 fingers that can be coated in paint and it would be fine. Smoosh. Yep, that's the new word. If you're watching and you've made it this far, comment the word smoosh. Don't know how to spell it. I'm not gonna tell you you're wrong if you spell it wrong. Just smoosh. That's the word of the day. Use it in a sentence. Use it in Scrabble. That'll be the best. Use that in Scrabble. Alright, I had a brief interruption because I had to have my dad come look at something. That was broken in my house. Uh, so, sorry about that. Uh, heard my little ringtone there. I am not cutting that out. It shouldn't get flagged for anything. Anyway, um, smushing. Smushing color on paper. What can I put here? Let's put a little bit of orange. We'll just smush that right there and we'll just, that little break uh, made all my colors dry. <laughs> so it's not blending anymore. It's just layering at this point. Um, then we'll do some purple. Ooh, that was a lot of purple. Okay, let's wipe that off. And we'll put some purple here, just like that. And some purple here. And then we can do this weird yellow color right there. Ew, that's like LSU colors. Southern Ma. Could be paint. Alright, and then we'll do green right there, up into the glitter, alright, I think, I think we're good, it's, it's covered, and that's what we're going for, is just coverage right now, I actually really like this, this was a lot of fun, just smushing, so, I'm going to wipe off my fingers, and going to then um, dry these pages.
because the paint was just gooped on there. It's taking a little longer for this to dry. I think I got most of it though, right there's a little, little sticky, um, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and flip over and do this page. So I think what I'm going to do for this one is all black on this one um, and just use just black as a base. Um, so let me dry off my paintbrush, backing paper, there's one, there's two. Stress reliever, that's what I was trying to say. This is a good stress reliever. Like this book in general, just putting color on paper and then later you can use it for something else. Like it's just, it's great, it's so much fun. All right, so we're just doing black on this one. That's all I want to do. And you're welcome. If you're gonna, if you're exactly doing what I'm doing, first off, okay, second, um, I recommend, or not recommend, but if you want, you could totally just finger paint this whole thing. This entire thing that we're doing right now, prepping all these pages, finger paint it now. All of it. It'll take a little longer for everything to dry, especially if you're not using a hair dryer. But just do it. Just go for it. Whatever makes you happy. That's what I want you to do. Sorry, I just realized I wasn't talking. Um, I am not really sure what to say right now. We are coming into the home stretch of finishing out this first little video to the art journal series. Um, I have decided to make it a series because I have um, ideas for other videos to put in the series, not necessarily just a composition notebook, um, which is the first part, um, but also some, an another thing that is a surprise, I say a surprise, um, it is unknown to you guys as of right now, but it will be made known eventually. All right, let me blow dry this. This side's pretty much dry, but blow dry this and then I'm going to switch out my water because once you use black, the water just becomes useless. I noticed something while I was blow drying. <sighs> Listen to that crinkle. This side doesn't really crinkle because of this, but I noticed because while I was painting the side, the side was mostly air drying and this um, Apple Barrel brand seems to dry pretty fast. Um, while this was air drying this side, you can see that it's curling up on the edges and it's tons more like crispier. I wonder if letting a page air dry instead of blow drying it would change how the the paper is because I mean they feel the same but like this one's like I don't know I just like how it curls up on the edge um so 
I'm going to go change out the water. I'm going to get some more tea. Um, maybe. I still have a little bit, but it's pretty cold now because I've been working at this for quite a while. Um, I have a few more pages to go before I'm going to call this video quits. Um, but they're just going to be some simple um, things. So I'm going to switch out my water and I will be right back. Alright, so instead of getting more tea, I actually made a cup of coffee and I actually wanted to show you guys. This is the coffee that I'm drinking. It's called, um, it's Branson Bean and it's called Cinnamon Hazelnut Cream. It is so, so good. Um, just the, the, the cinnamon and hazelnut together is delicious and I highly recommend it. I don't know if they sell it online or if you have to physically go to Branson to get it, but highly recommend it. I love it. And I made it and put some pumpkin spice cream in it, so we'll see how that tastes. Um, I don't know. It's really hot right now though, so I'm going to let it cool off for a little, uh, a little bit. Alright, so we just did this black page. Um, we're going to flip over. I lost my sheets that go underneath my paper. There, there. there's one for this side. And one for the side. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do next, it's going to be a little weird, but it is around, I didn't actually dry these off, it is around fall Halloween time, and I already made that, that one sheet that was kind of um, fall leaf kind of colors. So I think what I'm going to do, um, my lights are being weird. I think what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to do like a, some Halloween type colors. So bear with me while I smush paint onto the page. All right. So got to reapply some colors over here on my palette. There's orange. Need a little bit more black, and I think purple is good. Okay. So, like I said, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I'm just gonna do it. Um. So obviously, one Halloween color is orange. So I'm just gonna start, and I'm gonna do it over both pages. Um. Maybe I'll do like an orange base. Nah. I don't know. We're just gonna do it. Let's just do it. We're all about Nike today and just do it. Not really, but that seems... Smush and just do it are the words of the day. Alright, so there's some orange. Let's pick up some purple. Let's smoosh those together. I really actually do like orange and purple together. Like, just in and of itself, orange and purple are pretty cool together. Making sure I'm recording. All right, because sometimes, you know, you just don't know if you're recording or not. All right, let's go back. Let's see how that reacts. Actually, not bad. Purple. Purple, orange. <laughs> All right, so I'm mostly doing orange and purple, like primarily, and then I'm gonna go in and do some more black but since I already have um, black throughout this book so far, I am going to, and since it's such a dark color and will pretty much take over anything that I put, like, put it on top of, I'm going to, like, primarily do orange and purple here. And 
No sí, no sé acaso. So what are your guys' plans for Halloween? Um, we are going to be having a small little Halloween party get together thing with a couple of our friends. Um, we did it last year and had everybody dress up um, that came and we just played games for a while. Um, I think we're gonna do that again this year. Um, so we'll just, uh, last year Titus and I did steampunk and I think we agreed to do that again this year because we spent a lot of money on those costumes last year <laughs> and can't justify buying new ones again this year so we're just gonna do Steampunk again, we're just going to add to our costumes a little bit. Oop, hit my light. Again, just, we're just putting paper, putting color down, y'all. There's nothing artistic going on yet. The artistic is what's going to come later. I think I'm gonna call that good and I know I just cleaned out my water with the black but um, I gotta clean it up all right gonna dry this and I'll be right back There's my Halloween one. At first, I didn't really like how it um, was turning out, um, but I actually do like it now. Um, and it looks really cool next to the black. Um, this part's still a little sticky, but we're just gonna keep going. All right, I think I have two more sections to do, so I'm gonna do these two pages, and then I'm gonna do these two pages, and then I'm gonna be done for this video. So, what are we gonna do next? Let's do, let's do some more watercolor. My water is a little dirty and that might affect um, the watercolor, but it's okay. I'm not too upset about it. So, gotta move that out of the way. Okay. Um. I think I'm just going to put colors down. Obviously that's what we've been doing this whole time. But I mean, I don't, I'm not gonna just, like, one page is gonna have this and the other page is gonna have this. I'm just gonna go and do the thing. I don't know if you guys can hear, but Titus is actually recording a video himself. Um, he has been working really hard on getting some videos to put up on YouTube, and then... Um, so hopefully he will do that soon. Um, I've been trying to be a huge encouragement so that he knows, like, other people would like to watch his videos, so... <clears throat> He's been working really hard on those lately. He is currently, um, I think doing a voiceover, so I'm, I'm sure he's very excited that I'm blow drying paper while he's trying to record, but for the record, I was doing this before he started doing that, so not my fault completely. Dang it! 
You guys, I did it. I did it already. Alright, I... I dipped my paintbrush into my coffee. I didn't do it all the way, so I think it's okay. I'm still gonna drink it. But, don't do that. Might as well just not even have it in the area. I knew it was going to happen. I mean, like like I said, I didn't get it really far in there, but... Ugh. Just a pain. Alright, so these are actually drying pretty fast this time. Um, I'm not really sure why it's doing that. Um, so my colors aren't really going to blend all that well since it's drying so fast. I forgot to put the paper down. Hold on. Oh, I forgot the other one. Hold on. Still not ready. Actually, there's a small theme that's happening. I like these colors together. I um, can't remember, was it this one? Yeah. I like this, like the way that this over here did the, that cool muted, like brown, beet orange kind of color. I'm putting a little thought into this one. Not necessarily thought like long term, more like where do I want colors to go together and stuff like that. So. I keep not talking. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Um, I'm very bad at the talking. I'm actually just kind of, I'm listening to Titus, but I can't actually hear him. Um, anytime he's recording and our doors are shut, uh, sound travels through the air vent, which is right above my desk. So I can almost hear him perfectly clear. Hope he can't hear me, because that would be distracting. So this thing, these watercolors took me a while to do. So a lot of it is 
already dry. Um, so I'm. Um, I might just let it finish drying. Um, I'll just let this one air dry for a little while. So um, I'm gonna let it air dry, and I'll come back, and we'll do the last two um, pages together. Um, so I will be right back. <clears throat> Alright, so I ended up blow drying that one because the air drying was just taking too long and I'm ready to be done with this so I can get started on everything else. Um, Alright, so I am going to do this last one. I am actually doing more than 20 um, because I stopped counting and paying attention. So I'm going to do this pretty much what I think I'm going to do is similar to this where I just put color on the page and we'll do something cool with it later because since this is the last thing that I'm going to be doing for this go around um, and I have a lot of paint left over I think I'm just going to put the paint on the paper and that's it. Um, so let me get my little pieces that go between pages. Come on. As much as I do like this, like the whole back color being, or the back of the watercolor being a page, I am going to paint over it because like I said, I have a lot of paint left over, so, um, I think I'm going to sponge brush this one, um, instead of finger painting. I don't have a reason, I'm just going for it, so, I may end up finger painting it, just because that's usually how it happens, but... As this video is slowly but surely coming to an end, um, I appreciate that you all were here with me today. Um, I hope that this gave you a spark of creativity and gives you an idea of something to do for yourself. Um, go out, get a, get a composition notebook. Um, and just go to town, paint the pages. Um, we're just just putting color on paper, and this really, really does help with not being afraid of a white page because that that does happen. Um, just having a blank page, looking back at you, this does create. Um, it creates a space that it's already, it's not completely white, it's a started piece for you, um, and I just, I like this. It's very relaxing, it's very stress-free, um, very stress-relieving, so if you are having a rough day and you just need something mind-numbing, but you don't want to turn to your phone, grab a composition book and just, and some paint, and just go to town. It's, this has been an actual, a, a really fun time, honestly. Um, I hope you guys found are finding it to be fun, or at least fun to watch. Um, so I'm attempting to use up all the rest of my paint, and like I said, there's quite a bit left. Um, so I am just filling up the pages at this point. Um, just putting the color on the page like I've been doing this whole time. Um, 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's video as much as I did. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when I post again. Um, I will be doing another video like this shortly. Um, I will be doing videos showing you guys what I'm doing on these prepared pages. Um, so I hope you guys join me for that when those come out. I don't know when they will be coming out um, just yet, but when they do, I'm very excited for them. Um, I'm just excited for this in general. I've been wanting to do this for a few weeks now, and I just haven't gotten the chance to do it, and I didn't have a composition notebook available available. Such a weird word. Um, so I'm glad that I got one and I'm getting to do this with you guys. So don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Um, one thing that I would be wary of whenever you're using a lot of paint like this um, all at once is um, I did have a couple tears in my paper, which is fine. We'll figure something out with that later. Um, but I'm just forewarning you if you put a, a big glob of paint on there and then don't dry it or let it dry or something and then keep trying to go you're gonna end up with some tears so I had a couple in this one um, but I just wanted to warn you guys about that so let's do a final flip through of all the pages that we did today we are getting some thickness in our book already so here is our final flip through of the pages that we did today.